I want to thank you very much for being a part of the audience for this series in a family way. At the end of this conversation, we're going to be opening up the floor to hear your questions. So to thank you for participating, we're going to have a random drawing for one $25 gift card. And we really look forward to hearing what your questions are and finding the very best answers just for you. Welcome everyone. I am so excited to welcome you all. And we're looking at what resources and options are available here in Pueblo, Colorado to moms that have just found out they're pregnant. So we're looking at pregnancy and early childhood through the lens of substance use. So if you or someone you love has just found out they're pregnant and you're using substances, this program and this series of programs is especially for you. And we're glad you're here today. We're gonna to start out session one with two really committed and wonderful certified nurse midwives from Pueblo Community Health Center. We have Lisa Rich and Chandra Lujan. I wanna thank you both so much for being here today. We're really eager to hear what you have to share. Thank you for having us. We are certified nurse midwives uh, at Pueblo Community Health Center. Uh, we provide Subutex uh, buprenorphine services here in an integrated program. We are not the only program in Pueblo, but uh, we're going to talk a little bit about our, our program, a lot of questions that people ask us. And so in that regard, I do have a little PowerPoint. I know everybody hates PowerPoints. I don't want you to feel like you're in school. I promise it's really, really short. Uh, and, uh, and hopefully we'll give you some information that you want and then we'll go back to a normal conversation. Medication assisted treatment or, or MAT uh, for opiate use in pregnancy. Um, so we both feel pretty strongly that pregnancy is a really good time to get help. Uh, a lot of times it's uh, the thing that kind of drives us to want to do better for our babies. So uh, if you're thinking about getting clean, uh, we are really excited to talk to you. Uh, and we know that when you use um, opioids, heroin, uh, you know, uh, pills, um, different forms that aren't uh, regulated, uh, that those uh, that use has been linked to uh, having babies early, having really small babies, having babies with breathing problems, having babies that don't feed very well, and also not great outcomes for moms all the time. And so we want you and your baby to both be really healthy. And uh, if you are able to come in and see us, we give pregnancy care and also can help you take that step towards uh, getting away from substances. Uh, anything you want to add? Yes, and that's all substances. Um, we specifically here are talking about medication treatment and opioid use disorders, but it is important to realize that we do um, also have services if you are addicted to alcohol, if you're addicted to methamphetamines, um, even smoking um, in pregnancy. We have many, many resources. There's lots we could do, substance abuse, um, counseling, um, counselors available to help you in that way. What do we do? What are we mostly talking about today? We're talking about medication assisted treatment. So the medication, I think, especially in the early days when you're getting clean, does a lot of the heavy lifting. Um, and we're using buprenorphine. Uh, there are other places in town where you can do methadone, but uh, we focus on buprenorphine here at PCHC. Um, and it's a little bit of an easier schedule, an easier schedule. You don't have to check in every day. Um, the uh, assisted part is that the medication helps you to not get sick so that you can focus on recovery. And the treatment is the medication along with behavioral therapy. And we do offer both at PCHC. You wanna add anything? <laughs> uh, no, I think, you, I think you said it all. I think it's important to know that it, um, as Lisa said, the medication, we know that one of the toughest parts is just kind of getting through maybe the first 24 to 48 hours. Um, and there are 
besides the buprenorphine and the methadone, we do have um, other medications that we use to help with other symptoms. So anxiety, diarrhea, nausea, all the things that I know um, can be a big barrier to achieving um, sobriety, um, we try to help with those as well. I'm not going to get really into the science too much, but uh, I did want to talk really briefly about how the medicine works. Um, it, I kind of compare it to cars a little bit. So when you're on um, heroin, we'll say, uh, we'll use that for an example, or you're on methadone, um, they fully engage your brain. So it's kind of like driving a Corvette or a Ferrari. Um, and buprenorphine is more like driving like a, a Prius. <laughs> you know, or, or maybe like a Jeep, you, can, you, can, you know, so it feels that part of your brain that is going to make you feel sick, um, but it's, you, you're not going to get that high. Um, so you're, you're going to be able to be more stable. And then you've got naltrexone, um, which blocks it, and that's the medication that people use when they're overdosing, and that's uh, kind of um, uh, something I think probably everybody knows. Yeah, you know, Narcan. Yes, yeah, correct. So. So I think I, I talk to a lot of people who are uh, going back and forth between being sick and functioning um, and spending most of their day trying not to be sick. Uh, and so what buprenorphine does and methadone, um, but it, like I said, I'm going to talk mostly about buprenorphine, is it kind of just melt, it, like even things out. So you're not spending all your time trying not to be sick, and it's giving you a chance to be able to uh, get things back together, to get a job, uh, to talk to family members again, uh, to kind of get life back together. And we also know that when you are pregnant, um, every time that you're withdrawing, the baby's also withdrawing. So being able to just keep that stable line like you see on the bottom is a chance for the baby to also be stable. Okay. Again, just in, of course, the uses of buprenorphine, it, you know, it really does decrease the incidences or chances of overdose, obviously, if using alone, but we can talk a little bit about that um, later. So what to expect when you come into PCHC? Uh, and, and you come in for prenatal care, so you're going to expect those regular prenatal appointments. And please come. Don't be afraid to come um, because they're using substances. Like we're, we definitely are not going to judge you like we want you to come in and we want you to come in as early as you see that second line like we don't want you to be scared or feel like you're going to be judged um, we want to treat you just like any other pregnant mom um, with the addition of some extra help so um, part of that is having a medical exam making sure that you're healthy making sure that um, you know you don't have any damage to your heart or anything else going on and have lab work um, and also to talk with our behavioral people and kind of go over their treatment plan as well. And we do work together uh, to do that. Uh, and then once you're cleared medically, um, if you're early enough in your pregnancy, and this is a really good reason to come in as early as you can, is we can actually even do home inductions. We have really easy um, instructions on how to do that at home. Um, so you're in your own space, you can take a shower, you can be in your own bathroom, your own bed, um, and not be in an uncomfortable situation. Uh, and, you know, we call and check in and do that kind of stuff. Uh, so the earlier you come in, the more choices that you have and the more options you have uh, for doing that, that buprenorphine induction. Uh, the further along you get, especially once we get into the third trimester, we end up um, being a little more uh, limited on how we can do it and, and safely for you and the baby because like I said before when you're withdrawing the baby's also withdrawing and so we really want to make sure that we're able to manage your symptoms and we're able to manage how the baby and we are we are definitely able to do that though it is usually in an inpatient setting um, on, on labor and delivery and again that's just because the baby is so far along um, and we really just need to keep um, a closer eye on you and the baby overall managing the symptoms but we do realize that it's probably more ideal to do that at home in your own setting. So again, like Lisa said, um, trying to get in as soon as possible does definitely help. But again, we're going to do what the what is best for you and the baby and overall health uh, for for you both when it comes to the induction process. 
And then we follow up with prenatal care. Usually when I've got um, a mom that has just started on her buprenorphine, I see her about once a week. Uh, we just check in, see how you're doing, make sure you're not having any craving, make sure you're not having any side effects, listen to your baby, talk to you about everything else that's going on. It's not just about your substance use, it's about having a really healthy pregnancy. So we talk about diet, we talk about um, how you're feeling, just everything. Um, and then you'll also be having behavioral health appointments. Uh, and uh, we also keep following you postpartum. Uh, so I have moms that have been clean for over a year now. Uh, and I still, um, they're not seeing me every week anymore because they're really stable. So sometimes once a month, sometimes every three months, um, as they go more and more out into their life um, and farther away from, from their history of, of addiction. So I promised you it was short. Uh, so this is the number that you can call to make an appointment. And you know, uh, we have services available for you, services available for your for your partner. Um, we are not the only person in town uh, who does. Uh, so, so, so every person is an um, individual, obviously, and there is a population at times. Um, you know, some people do need inpatient for thirty days. So just know that. Um, coming here, we are available to help you get additional resources if this program specifically on um, the medication assisted treatment program through PCHD is not for you. We can still take care of you prenatally and definitely assist you in getting into um, inpatient programs, um, maybe outpatient programs that fit um, you a little bit better. Um, we know that um, healthcare, um, uh, health solutions does a lot of um, treatment, um, crossroads, obviously, frontline, um, front range, front range yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, new, and, and numerous methadone clinics. There are other options, but um, again, the sooner you get in in pregnancy, the more we can assess the situation um, and develop a plan that is appropriate for you and is going to make you the most successful um, in putting this. And we just you know, like, you know, we want you to come, we want you to be safe. We're not here to judge you. We, you know, we really just want to help you get to where you want to be. That was wonderful. I have a couple of questions. Okay. Um, and one of the things that you said that I didn't know, I didn't realize is that you can really help moms with a lot of different substances. So alcohol, maybe THC, um, tobacco. Correct. Are is there medically assisted treatment for all those different substances, or just the opioids? Just the opioids. And well, smoking. It, it, yeah, I was say, <laughs> and smoking. I mean, we obviously can do replacement nicotine with the goal, obviously, of trying to get down and off of that. Um, but you know, in the world of substance use, you know, there are people that just have don't have the opioid disorder, and we just want them to know that again, early prenatal care is going to be the best thing for them and their baby. And we do have substance abuse counselors here that can um, facilitate. Um, you know, treatment and, and, and trying to become clean of that. But unfortunately, at this point, there's not medications to kind of offset those two. I wish there Yeah, we wish like there was. I would nothing, but I mean, that would be amazing. Like right. if we could have, them, right? yeah. <laughs> you know, but I, we just want you to know that we're a place that you can come without judgment and we can help with behavioral health. If you're smoking, we can help with, um, you know, we have patches, we have at Wellbutrin, we have a lot of medications and then we do have medications for opioids as well. Unfortunately, science hasn't caught up to the right, but um, I think they're working on it though. But right now um, medications for those two and behavioral health for all. So the behavioral health piece is kind of what helps you change the way you're thinking. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, 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 and it does um, maybe kind of talk about like different coping mechanisms, strategies on when you really um, start feeling the urge, what should I do? Um, how do I get through those difficult parts of my day? Um, May, you know, and sometimes if people are very engaged, I mean, it can dive all the way down into why did I start using in the first place? What can right. I do not to use later? So it's really right. um, patient driven um, on where they want to go with that. Yeah. Ultimately, with the goal of, you know, uh, avoiding substance, substance in general. Right. And we do recognize that in the early days of recovery, like, 
you know, you might not want to talk about like everything traumatic that's happened in your life, to, you, yeah. you know, up to this point that a lot of it is about, you know, trying to not be withdrawing, trying to like, you know, get into stable housing, trying to get a job, trying to work things out with your parole officer sometimes, you know, and so, uh, you know, I kind of think about it as like a pyramid of like, where you are, you know, um, and so, you know, obviously at the top of it is that, you know, we'll all learn really great coping skills and we won't use any substances and, you know, everything will be wonderful, but, you know, some, some people are, you know, I need to pay my heat bill and, you know, um, I need to uh, get clean for my baby. I need to get into prenatal care. Like, you know, I need to settle things. I have lethal problems that I've got to settle. And so, you know, we don't expect you to come in like up here at the top. Like we want to help you get there um, or as close to there as you want to be, but we really want to meet you where you are. And so if, you know, if you're not there yet, we do like because of federal law, like you have to have a behavioral health component and we certainly love our behavioral health. Um, and so there is always a component of talking um, and that's true in any program that you'd be in. And I think that's part of like changing thought patterns, um, but nobody is gonna expect you to come in and be like up here. Uh, we really wanna meet you where you are and be a safe place for you. I think that's gotta be the most helpful way to to set a program up for sure, because people are in a lot of different different places. That's I'm glad you said that. Um, so would somebody just walk in and talk to a receptionist, or how do they how do they actually enter the program? Yeah. Um, but because of COVID and obviously trying to keep everybody as safe as possible, um, when you walk up, it, it says on the door, "We're not allowing you walk in." Um, so there is a number to call and we do go ahead and just schedule the pregnancy test. As soon as you get the first, the second line, you call, we schedule a pregnancy test, we get you in, and then we get the ball rolling. Again, remember that not always is it going to be the first and second visit that we see somebody that we're able to give them medication. There, you know, we are medical providers and we have to address everything. And one of the biggest things is, are you healthy? enough is your baby in the pregnancy healthy enough to take steps forward um sometimes there are medical issues that we need to address first um i can say an example of hypertension if somebody significantly has high blood pressure you know we may have to get certain things under control and that's why we say everybody's different but our our goal is your goal and it's to get you you know a healthy baby healthy mom um substance free um and, and forward however we can do that and there are very few reasons why we would not be right. able to move right. forward um you, you know very very few reasons and so you know and even if you don't know if you're pregnant and you can't afford a pregnancy test you can call and make an appointment we have free pregnancy tests oh. um you know you don't if you suspect you know um you know you we can get you birth control if you know you're not trying to be pregnant. <laughs> you know, uh, you, you know, this is just a, a really safe, like understanding place. To um, and, and to kind of piggyback off that when she talks about costs and things, you know, um, PCH is really good as well. Like she said, if you're not sure if you're pregnant or you just need birth control, um, we can facilitate all those things coming in, getting you registered. So I know sometimes say, well, I don't even have a doctor. I don't even have yeah. I really don't. Um, we will help you. We will help out. you figure that yeah. out. We will get it uh, um, going. So don't be afraid of that because that can be overwhelming. Yeah. Figuring out how to get insurance and do I qualify? Um, there's many people here at PCH that will help us figure out the best plan for you. Um, it gets you enrolled yeah. in Medicaid yeah. um, and all those sorts of things. So definitely, yeah. we're here to help with that as well. And we are a federally qualified health center, so we do not turn anyone away. We are not. Uh, you know, we don't you won't get refused services for lack of, of resources. Um, you know, we are a place that anyone can come and get health care, and we're actually really proud of that. Yeah. Boy, we need that. I, I When we were talking about how do they enter, I guess what I really need to also say is that it is December of 2020. Yes. So <laughs> you probably won't be watching this until 2021, but right now... Right. December of 2020, the United States is in a high increase 
of COVID patients. Mm -hmm. And we are exercising as great a caution in socially distancing, or I guess we should really say physically distancing. We're physically distancing from one another. We want to remain socially connected right. because we need, we need those connections and we need the support. And, and that's why we're, we're even um, talking about this. So that's why there's uh, maybe added steps that we're talking about getting into the program that may not come to pass six months from now when right. people are vaccinated. Right. Right, so, right, right. Um, and we hope, and what, the way that it used to be before before the pandemic was you could just walk in uh, sure. and, you could get, and you could get a free pregnancy test. And if you, you know, once you get in here and we get you registered for services, like we can help you with rides to appointments. Like we have a lot of services. Uh, we we want you to come and we want to help you to come. And we understand that people don't have always a lot of resources. Uh, so we have somebody who can help with housing. We have somebody who can help with rides. You know, we, we have a lot of in place. So I can't it's promise you we're gonna fix everything for you. <laughs> we really wanna try. <laughs> That's beautiful. Um, so I've been doing some programming uh, related to substance use and, and there's a question that always comes up in my mind um, about the recovery process because we're, we're talking about, you know, moms choosing to enter recovery because their life is changing and, you know, they find that they're responsible for somebody other than just their own health now and they have that baby. But does recovery always include relapse? And what happens if a mom in your care were to relapse? What what can she expect? I don't think it always includes relapse, but I think a lot of times it does. And I think a lot of times by the time somebody comes in here, they've already tried to do it on their own a lot of times. Um, so we're usually not seeing people on their first uh, their first try. Um, and I think that the pregnancy for pregnancy for a lot of women, women ends up being that thing that uh, really allows them to make it stick. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, but, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a monumental time in their life and we start contemplating um, new children and, you know, how, where is life going to go? But I think that it is one of the, the biggest chances of recovery and that is yeah. why we want people to get in. Yeah. Um, does does relapse happen? Um, sure. Um, and we talk about those things. What do we do if you relapse? We definitely have Narcan here. Um, if people, you know, we, we definitely provide um, anyone that is using, whether or not they are in our program, but they're pregnant and actively using, we provide them with Narcan um, and encourage to have multiple, uh, you know, injections, or not injections, but nasal um, phrase um, available and talking about partners and, and, and uh, for other family members how to use it. Um, but again, if it does happen, what we want and what we hope is that you would trust us enough to let us know that. Yeah. Will it, you know, and then sometimes we have to adjust dosages to medications and increase, you know, but that's that's part of the process and we do understand that. Yeah, yeah. I expect you to be perfect. Uh, you know, we, we we don't think you're a bad person. We don't think you're a bad mom. Like we uh, know that this is hard, uh, you know, and we recognize that it's hard. And and so we really just want you to come in and, and be honest and we'll figure it out. It is best. Yeah. Totally. Um, okay, this is really brass tacks. It's <laughs> how does a mom pay for treatment? Uh, we're a federally qualified health center. Most of our patients have Medicaid, um, and we have people here who can help you register for Medicaid. Uh, Medicaid has a much broader coverage if you are pregnant. So even if you think that you might not qualify for Medicaid, you probably do. Um, and Colorado is actually like a really um, good state when it comes 
recovering the buprenorphine. But if you can't afford it, and we do have people who might be from migrant populations or might not be citizens. Um, and we do also have a pharmacy that carries and is able to, uh, to we have, yeah, we, ha we have, we uh, have, we have pharmacy cards, we have people who pay as little as $5 a visit. Uh, you know, we really want you to, uh, to be successful um, and we're not gonna turn anyone one away due to finances, so. That's awesome. When you were talking about migrant populations, do you have um, bilingual practitioners or? We do, absolutely we do. Wow. We have one midwife who's, uh, First language is Spanish, uh, and she's also a buprenorphine provider. Uh, so, uh, you know, if that applies to you, uh, her name's Maria. Uh, so, uh, you know, she's uh, someone that you can talk to if you're Spanish speaking, even if you're uh, not a migrant, yeah. uh, not part of a migrant population. Uh, if your Spanish is the preferred language, we do have somebody who can help. Beautiful. Um, if somebody's kind of nervous, can they bring like a you know, a sibling or a best friend or a partner with them when they come to their. So are we talking in, in non-COVID times or? <laughs> well, let's do both. Let's okay. talk about both. Well, I, mean, I think it, 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 it depends. Obviously, right now we're only allowing um, one person or no, no people, just the, the patient that's being, um, you know, taken care of. The important part is, is seeking that treatment early in pregnancy, because then we could do the home induction and then you can have support systems there and things like that. But that has to be done prior to like, you know, the six months um, in order to get that done. Otherwise it is a hospital based situation, which currently now they are allowing one person to go in with them. Um, but again, that's changing day by day. Um, you know, um, a lot of the behavioral health sessions are done via phone, so you definitely could have that person with you talking. Um, also speaking on that, we have had multiple times that we have had partners that um, use together, and it's not realistic to get one partner um, sober and the other not, and so we have jumped through hoops and ran through the fire to Get these things so that they can they can get the um, father or um, significant other or mother or sister whoever they use with um, into as a patient PCH as well and try to do dual inductions if at all possible so you kind of are doing those things together again not a guarantee but it's definitely something that we realize is needed because there you know we understand it would be very difficult for you to be clean pregnant and then somebody using around you um, you know the best thing would be if we could you know. We, we want to help anybody who can. That's amazing. I mean, right there, that's so much support right there uh, that you're really setting people up to be successful. That's awesome. Do you find that there's myths about medically assisted treatment or, or the kind of work that you do with moms that we, we can do some debunking of? Uh, one thing that I hear is people being afraid that their baby is going to get taken away from them if they come in um, and actually coming in and, and being stable in a treatment program. Uh, like we do not, uh, nobody's going to call family services, uh, especially if you're stable and especially in the hospital, um, like DCFS or DFS, I don't know what it is in Colorado. Uh, okay. Yes, sorry. <laughs> um, so they uh, they don't get involved if you're stable in a, in a, in a treatment program. Uh, you know, you you can breastfeed. You you know, if you're if you've been you know stable for three months, and it's another argument to come in like as soon as you can. Uh, you, you know, to be to be stable uh, earlier in your pregnancy um, is better outcomes for you and better outcomes for your baby. Um, um, I think one of um, the biggest myths that we debunk um, it's better for me to use nothing so my baby won't withdraw um, in the hospital okay so mm -hmm. we cannot say hard enough and the nursery staff at Parkview tends to support this stopping the use of opiates suddenly is one of 
the worst things that you can do for multiple reasons. Um, you know, it can cause severe distress to the mother, hypertension, and remember anything that happens to the mother can happen to the baby, but also um, the risk of overdose is significant because you go so long without using that you two, three, four, five weeks later get a strong craving and use, and now you've possibly overdosed. So we prefer and we kind of educate on keeping you on that straight line, like Lisa says. Um, we are keeping the cravings away. We are keeping you medically stable um, and, you know, in turn keeps the baby stable. Um, the the times of keeping babies, you know, for weeks and weeks and months and months, um, they're significantly, significantly shortened with the use of buprenorphine. Um, it has proven to really help these newborn babies um, transition into life without significant medical issues um, or withdrawal symptoms. The babies aren't born addicted. Uh, you know, addiction is this whole like host of things, you know, it's, it's about decisions that we make as adults. It's about, you know, all the traumas that have happened to us, like everything, uh, you know, coping skills, all these things, babies don't have that. Babies are really a clean, clean slate. So babies can be born with something called neonatal absence syndrome. And I know you're going to have somebody else talk about that in, a, in another, um, in another uh, one of these segments, but you know, that's not addiction and we can definitely help babies. Um, get through that. And it is, like Chandra said, significantly less than if you're using and significantly, uh, probably a lot less of a transition than you than you think it is. Um, it, it, it tends to be really smooth and go pretty well. Um, it tends to be a, a, a pretty short stay in the hospital. Um, and babies tend to do well, tend to breastfeed well, uh, tend to, you know, not have any long-term effects. Uh, you know, it's it's a really good medication. Right. And, 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 and it's a much rarely do we have to do, if, and we're speaking of buprenorphine alone and no other um, substances um, in their system, um, these babies just transition really well. We tend to not need medication like it used to be in the older times. Um, we, most of the times the baby go home without any medication assistance needed in the nursery. So that's important too. So they aren't necessarily going straight into the NICU? Oh, no, no. Wow, because that makes that transition home a lot easier. Correct. Yeah. Right. I want to um, ask one question when we're talking about um, overdosing. And I think for me, it was like, okay, so it's that tolerance because don't you then you build up a tolerance to a certain level of drug medication and then you're not on it for like you say four five six weeks and then you go back to the dose that you were at before you quit yes. and that's when you have breathing problems and that is very risky you know we know that you're at you we know that you know, using again after you've been in treatment, after you've abstained is, you know, or if you stop cold turkey on your own, like I think every, I think a lot of people know that that's a really risky time. Uh, I always tell people don't use at the same level that you were using, you know, make sure that you know your dealer, uh, you know, that is not the time to be going to a new dealer, uh, you know, make sure you're not using alone, make sure you have Narcan, make sure that you know how to use that Narcan, and I, you know, we can show you how to use it, uh, you know, what we want is for you to be alive. Yeah. Um, because all of the things we can figure out, we can figure out, you, you know, you can, you can figure out the substance, you can figure out parenting, you can figure out your pregnancy as long as you're still here. So, you know, uh, you, you know, we can, we make a lot of mistakes as human beings and, you know, we don't want like slipping back into substance to be something that ends your life. Uh, we want you to be around. You know, what if it, what, so what if it's mom, you know, um, my daughters uh, just found out she's pregnant and I know she's using substances or my sister, or, you know, is there, is there some guidance that you can give to that person's loved one? I, I don't know if I would give 
guidance to the loved one. What I what I would say, just the one point that I would like to end with, you know, um, is that we care. We're here. We know that people end up addicted to substances for multiple reasons, um, and you know, we're we're here to help you. We're here to guide you through everything. Um, and the stigma. Um, is is a thing we understand that, but I have to tell you, the stigma is not as much as you think. We deal with this every single day. There there are people in what we call it opiate use disorder, right? You're not addicted to heroin. You have an opiate use disorder. Um, we deal with people every day having babies every day, and so really, um, the nurses are more educated about it. The nursery is more educated about it. We know so much more about it than we did even a year ago. Um, that we don't want you to be afraid and don't be afraid anybody's going to look down on you because truly we do this, we see this, we deal with this every day. There is a huge population in Pueblo, as we all know, and it's it's a big issue. And we just want to do our part um, to decrease that that population that's suffering. I mean, it's there, it, all I can say is it's, it's suffering. Um, so whatever we can do to help, we will. You are not a bad person, not, you know, a moral failing, you know, you have changed the chemistry in your brain. And, you know, if you had diabetes, I wouldn't be like, oh, you ate cake, you can't get insulin anymore. You know, it, 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 uh, you know, it's, it's a medical issue. And, you know, we don't want to look at you and we don't look at you as somebody who's bad. Like you're not a bad mom. You, you know, you're, you're not a bad person. You know, you're somebody whose brain chemistry has changed and, and we want to help you to, you know, even the playing field a little bit so that you can go back and have a normal life. That's not just about not getting sick anymore. Lisa Rich, Chandra Lujan, you guys are doing really wonderful work for the families in Pueblo, Colorado, and I thank you both so much. I think we're going to be having some questions typed into the chat on this, and I hope you guys can stay with us so that we can answer those questions as they come in. Sure.